Welcome to 100 Yards of Football. I'm your host, Vincent Turner. Today, we got a history special. I'm going to recap the 1965 Orange Bowl between the Texas Longhorns and the University of Alabama Roll Tide. If you like the video today, please come in and share it. We surely appreciate it here at 100 Yards of Football. So let me roll the time back to 1965, Friday night, January 1st. You had the Texas Longhorns coming in ranked number three in the country, taking on the national champions, the University of Alabama, as they had been already voted. Now, let me go back to the 1964 season to, to paint the picture of how we came to this game. In 1963, the Texas Longhorns had won the national championship, so they came into the 1964 season ranked number one. And they won it in 63 in the Cotton Bowl with a 28-6 win over the Navy Academy. They had their quarterback from Cincinnati, Ohio. I think his name was Roger Starback, and I think he did pretty good with the Dallas Cowboys. But this Texas team was very special going into the 1964 season. They was led by a junior linebacker. And I'm broadcasting live from the Metro Atlanta area. And he goes down as one of the greatest Atlanta Falcon football players ever. He was out of San Antonio, Texas, by the name of Tony Nobles. And he was leading number one Texas Longhorns that year. Alabama came in and ranked number three. Texas stayed number one until a gloomy night in October when they played the school I attended, the University of Arkansas. And they ended up losing that game 14 to 13 by failing on the two-point conversion. And they lost to an Arkansas team that won kind of like a split of the national championship because the Writer Association voted Arkansas number one with their big-time win in the combo that year in 65 over Nebraska. And on that Arkansas team, that 64 team, all I have to say, they had the great Ken Hatfield, know about him, former head coach at the University of Arkansas, Clemson University. They had a pretty good quarterback in Fred Marshall. Mm -hmm. They had Bobby Brunette, outstanding halfback. They had a great coaching staff. Head coach was Frank Burles. But on their coaching staff, they had Barry Switzer. They had Bill Pace. They had Johnny Majors, all of them were assistants. But the two famous guys that was on that, on that team that year, the 64 Hawks, were the most powerful man in the National Football League, Mr. Jerry Jones, who was a starting offensive tackle. And my man from Beaumont, Texas, Jerry J Jimmy Johnson. And we already know what he's done on the college level in the NFL level as a head coach. Now getting to the game. Texas came in number three, and it was playing the University of Alabama. Coming into the 64 season, Bud Bryant had a special player. At that time, maybe one of the greatest college football players that's ever stepped on the soil. He was a smooth guy, pretty boy, swag, soul. Everything you want about a football player. His name was Joe Miller named Woolly Namath out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. First four games of the year, Alabama was rolling. But at that year, fourth game of the year against North Carolina State, Joe Namath went down with a serious knee injury and didn't play no more the rest of the season. Till at the end of the year, he was put in special situations. Taking over for him at quarterback was Steve Sloan out of the great state of Tennessee. And Alabama was able to go on and finish undefeated. But going into the Orange Bowl, 1965 was very special. It was the Orange Bowl was the first night game broadcasted in prime time. 80,000 fans, which was the largest in Orange Bowl history, was going to witness, witness this game. Then, on top of that, there was projecting 25 million people watching the game on NBC. The most highest rated watch college football game in college football history. Then the people that was at the game that made it special. You had Richard Nixon, former president at the game. You had one of the greatest comedians ever, Jackie Gleason, was talking about the game. And everybody wanted to come see Joe Willie Namer play his last game. He was a senior, and it was rumors that he had already signed with the New York Jets for the largest contract in pro football history on any level, pro baseball, basketball for 400000 a year. And everything that week was sitting around the Orange Bowl, and all you could talk about was Bell Bryant, the great coach at Alabama, and Joe Willie Namer. But however, 
and practice for Joe Namath went down again with a, with a knee injury, the same knee he had hurt against North Carolina State earlier in the year. And then what happened? Texas and Alabama had to do their thing at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 1st, 1965. Steve Sloan started a quarterback for Alabama. Alabama struggled out against offensively. With 23 seconds left in the first quarter, Texas got it going. Ernie Coy, that went first round in the 65 draft, NFL draft, went 79 yards for a touchdown. Texas up 7-0. The second quarter started. Alabama still struggling on offense. Three and out. Texas get the ball back with about 9.51 to go. Texas makes a change at quarterback. They bring their free safety, who starred Jim Hudson. They get him a series at the quarterback position because he has the strongest arm. And you know what he did? He goes back. And he bombs away his George Sauer on the 69-yard touchdown. And all of a sudden, they're bad shot. Texas is up 14 to nothing. And they said, go, horns, go. Go, horns, go. Go, horns, go. And it's 14 to nothing. And Brad Brown said, you know what? I got my best player who I call the greatest athlete ever. And I'm not going to go out like this. We down 14 to nothing. And I'm going to put him in the game. Joe Willie Namath comes off the bench. You can go watch the replay. If you got YouTube, the 1965 Orange Bowl between Alabama and Texas. And Joe Namath, he comes off the bench. He's got these white soccer shoes on. And his knee is heavily taped. He comes running on the field, and all of a sudden, about 40,000 fans that made the trip up from Tuscaloosa to University of Alabama, they go crazy. They start singing Roll Tide. And then that fight song, da 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 Joe Namer. 8.51 to go in the second quarter. He takes Alabama on a 14-play, 87-yard drive. First play, 14 yards to Tom Thompson. Next play, 14 yards to Wayne Cook. Next play, the next two plays, 34 yards in the air to Ray Perkins. Then, 14 yards, 11 yards to Wayne Tribble. And then seven yards to Wayne Tribble. Touchdown, Alabama's back in the game, 14 to seven. The crowd is going crazy. And then everybody including Mr. Jim Simpson, who's doing the play-by-play, -play, and Bud Wilkerson, who's doing the common color commentary, saying, that's why this young man is special. The playboy from Beaver Falls, Joe Namor. The game goes back and forth in the second quarter. Texas is able to regroup. They go on the drive. Alabama defense stiffens inside the 30-yard line. Alabama blocks Texas field goal. David Ray tries to pick it up. He fumbles the block. Field goal. Texas gets it back on the own 30 on Alabama's 38 yard line. Three plays later, Ernie Coy goes in for a touchdown. Texas is up 21 to 7 at halftime. But Alabama is feeling good about this self because Joe Namath is putting on the show. And that's why the city of New York, Broadway, is getting ready to embrace him. Then in the second half, Alabama defense stands up and he holds Texas with no points and only four first downs in the second half. But Joe Namath still continues magic. He takes Alabama in the third quarter on a nine-play, 63-yard drive, and he throws a 20-yard laser to Ray Perkins. Laser is 21-14 Alabama in the third quarter. And the crowd is going crazy. The momentum is shifting. Jackie Gleason is going crazy, sipping on whiskey. Richard Nixon is saying, oh, my God, this is more exciting for me running for the president in 1968. Alabama is coming. Then in the fourth quarter, Alabama goes on another drive. But Texas defense stiffens. Alabama kicks a field goal. It's 21 to 17. Then we've got seven minutes to go. Texas has the ball on their own 38. There's a fumble. There's the key break in the game. Alabama recovers. And Joe Willie comes off the sideline. Let me back up. Joe Willie Namer comes off the sideline. He takes the ball over at the 38. Three plays later, Alabama's at the Texas six-yard line. The crowd is going crazy. The Texas people saying, defense, defense, way back. Defense, defense, way back. 
and the University of Alabama. They're saying roll tide. The fight, the, the school band is playing. Da, 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 da. First and goal at the six yard line. Joe Namer hands off to Steve Mobin. Star tailback three times. Gains five and a half yards. Alabama's on the one yard line with about five minutes to go. Joe Namer calls timeout. He goes over to the bear. He says, Bear, what should I run? Bear says, Hey, we're going to probably run with Steve Bowman. Let's go with him again. I'm, I got confidence in the offensive line. Well, Joe Willie Namer comes back in the huddle. He changes the play. He says, Hey, what, you know what? I'm going to call a quarterback sneak. Go back and watch the play. Joe Namer calls a quarterback sneak. It looks like he's going to get in, but there's a tackle from Texas named Fred Bidrick. And the young man, from San Antonio, Texas, who had a great career with the Atlanta Falcons, who's one of the greatest Falcons of all time. He was a junior. Tommy Nobles comes in the hole, and they hit Joe Namath, and he stopped a half an inch from the goal line. There's a big commotion, and the referees say this. You didn't make it. And the University of Texas stops Alabama on the one-yard line. Texas takes over. That's the ball game. Alabama gets the ball back two more times. Next possession was about three minutes ago. Joe Namath throws an interception. Then Alabama gets the ball back with about a minute and a half, four incompletions, and Texas has sprung the upset. They beat Alabama in the Orange Bowl, the 1965 Orange Bowl, 21-17. And what I took from that football game when I did my research is that that was a very talented Texas football team that beat Alabama that night. They put 10 players in the National Football League off that team. But this is that really the special story to this video today. Joe Namath in 1969 guaranteed that the New York Jets would beat the Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl three, And he came through with his promise. As the Jets upset Baltimore 16-7 in the same place they played the 65 Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. But you know what? He had four teammates that was on his team. That was on this Texas team that night in 1965. That was John Elliott, the starting defensive tackle. Pete Lamons, who had two interceptions against Joe Willie Namer that night, was a starting tight end. Then you had the free safety and the quarterback, Jim Hudson. And then you had the wide receiver, George Sawyer. Man, that's special. That's real special. And all I can say is stars were born that night. And one of them was Joe Willie Namer. But however, the night belonged to the Texas Longhorns. So I'm going to end the video today. There was a song that I'm going to put toward this game and to the video. It was by three young ladies out of Detroit, Michigan. They came out of the projects of Douglas Brewster. And they went by the name of the Supremes. The lead singer was Diana Ross. The other young lady was Florence Ballard. And the other young lady was Mary Wilson. And they had a song that said, I need you. Oh, how I need you. You, but all you do is treat me bad. Baby love, baby love. The University of Texas had baby love that night. And Joe Namath, University of Alabama, Went home like they were treated bad. Baby love, baby love. If you liked the video today, please come in and share. I'm your host, Vincent Turner. And thank you for watching 100 Yards Football. And before I end the day, I want to give a salute to all the veterans out there. To my uncle, Robert Turner Sr., who served in the U.S. military in the Vietnam War. To my uncle, Mr. Opie Turner, that served in the, U served in the U.S. military. To my father, Chester Turner, who served in the Air Force. To my partner, who I love dearly, Mr. Ronnie Keebler, who's been a great person behind 100 Yards Football and has pushed me over these last 10 years. Kudos to you, man. It's your day because you served five great years in the U.S. military. Be blessed to all the veterans out there and enjoy Memorial Day. Thank you for watching us this morning here on 100 Yards Football. I'm Vincent Turner. Have an outstanding day.